Ricky Rudd wasn't just one of NASCAR's Iron Men, he was THE Iron Man of his era. In 1984, Rudd was involved in a horrific crash during the Bush Clash at Daytona in which his car went airborne. The end result was a concussion and a torn cartilage in his ribcage. With the help of a flak jacket as well as taping his eyes open because they were so swollen, he was able to race in the Daytona 500. Then one week later, he scored his first win of the 1984 season at his home track of Richmond. Fast forward to the 1990s and Ricky Rudd was at a different part in his career where he was officially an owner driver. The first three seasons of Rudd Performance Motorsports were the best in the team's history. From 1994 to 1996, the team posted points finishes of 5th, 9th, and 6th. But by 1997 and 1998, despite winning multiple races a season prior, the team fell on hard times performance-wise and Ricky Rudd was very adamant why. Really, the way the rules are set up for testing and so on, uh, those guys should win every race. If, if I was Hendricks and my three cars didn't win every race out there, I'd be questioning why not, you know, what's wrong? They've got 180 employees, we have about 20, 25 people here. My opinion is uh, that sport doesn't need to be set up where a wealthy car owner can buy, can buy wins, and, and I'm afraid it's headed that way. I just hate to see people like Bud Moore that built this sport a real solid foundation be squeezed out of racing right now and, it, and it's it's just the beginning of it. it's going to happen and uh, I mean it wouldn't be impossible to see five car owners own the entire sport. Fast forward to September 27, 1998 for the running of the Napa Auto Care 500 at Martinsville. Entering this race, Ricky Rudd has yet to score a single top five during the 1998 season, but a glimmer of hope has shown this weekend. He qualifies on the front row and feels he has a car that can definitely compete for the first win of the season. Early on in the race, it is apparent that Ricky Rudd definitely has the car to beat. What's also apparent is the scorching 93 degree heat. This made it at least 140 to 150 degrees inside the cars on track. It's all good though, as every single driver in the field has a cooling system in the car. Let me emphasize that this is not air conditioned. The way it works is air is taken from outside of the race car through a duct filtered in through a hose, then through the carbon monoxide filter into a small fan. It's then pushed into the top of a driver's helmet and that's what keeps a driver's head cool. But this was during an era before cool boxes were actually a thing, so each team had their own version of how to cool off their own drivers. In Ricky Rudd's case, their team used a remedy that involved using dry ice. But every now and then, a cooling system does fail, and unfortunately, that would be the case in this race. You better look for somebody to drive this thing. Nothing's working. I got no cool air whatsoever. I pulled my drink hose out, and it's it froze up. It won't. I'm dying. Undoubtedly, that thing is frozen up. So what you need to do is get a little water and spray down that hose that'll go into that aluminum heat exchanger, and that will thaw that water up. Thing sat there and froze up solid. So you need to spray water down one of them duck hoses. Let's explain what's going on inside the tent car. Ricky tried a new helmet today. And early in the race, the, the, the cooling unit in the helmet, the fan and the cooling unit has frozen up. And it's a sealed system, so he can't get any air inside the helmet. He is basically inside that helmet suffocating. He says the heat is almost unbearable. He told Bill Engel, if you can find the driver, find someone. I've got to get out of this helmet. I can't breathe. Can you imagine that on a day as hot as it is here today? Since his win at the Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis in 1997, it's been a tough road for Ricky Rudd. So imagine driving a stock car while it being 150 degrees inside it with absolutely no cooling or drinking system. Both systems have completely faltered. But here's the thing, this didn't happen halfway through the race or with 100 laps to go. No, this happened on lap 5 of 500. Despite the rising temperatures inside his Ford Taurus, Rudd took over the lead for the first time on lap 15. Even though he was leading, the heat inside was so unbearable that the team started to look for a replacement driver, that being Hut Strickland on standby. Although running up front all day, the question was not where Ricky would finish, but rather if he could finish. If you want a driver, we got Hud Strickland standing here. And Ricky Rudd is going to try to stay in the car. Let me show you what they're doing here. They have taken, they have found little makeup bags and they're filling them full of ice and putting them down inside the uniform of Ricky Rudd. He said, if you keep these makeup bags full of ice coming, I might be able to make it. Got a little bit of a breeze. That's all I need right now. Four, cut it off for a little bit longer. Let it thaw out more, Ricky, and it'll work for you. 
what he has done is while driving with one hand, he has taken his other hand and taken the hose off of his helmet. Used the heat off the floorboard to blow in the hose and melt the dry ice. Now he has reconnected the hose back to his helmet and is getting a little bit of air. Ricky Rudd is given an ultimatum. Either give up a race-winning run in order for Hut Strickland to finish the race because the heat is so unbearable, or tough it out and go for the victory. The car was so dominant that Ricky Rudd basically waved Hut Strickland away saying, I got this. Although his team was doing everything in their power to keep the car as cool as humanly possible, it ended up backfiring at one point during the race on one of the late pit stops. The team tried to help. One time, they tried too hard. Can I, can I tell you something? What do they put on my back was hot. Well, there was a little miscommunication there. They used one of the cool down tanks and the, the garden hose sort of laid there in the heat. You know, a garden hose will sit there even though they got ice water in the tank. I probably had 150 degree water when they sprayed it down my back the first time and that just about finished me off. I just about passed out when they did that. Oh my goodness, could you imagine? It's already roughly 150 degrees inside the car. Then throw in some extremely hot water to boot and you have, without a doubt, a recipe for disaster. But Rudd once again got refocused and was thinking of not only the big picture in the race, but also the winning streak. Meanwhile, Ricky Rudd has won a race at least one race in the last 15 years. Four of those wins have come with seven or less races to go, and he did win very late in last year's competition. I know it bothers you, but you think about something else. You think about how good the lake is going to feel tomorrow when you're sitting over there with that winter checker flag and all that money. Think, think about that hospital bed right this minute. I'm going to drive my wheels off and get to that bed. Go, whatever. I like nurses, too. There were stock cars that couldn't withstand the heat. Hell, even the late Kenny Irwin Jr. needed to be pulled out of his race car for heat exhaustion. But in the end, Ricky Rudd not only outlasted the entire field to score his first victory of 98, but also beat the heat. The white flag is out, less than a lap to go for Ricky Rudd, but again, he's in heavy traffic. Anything can happen even on the last lap for Rudd. He's halfway around. I expect his spotters have told him, hey, you can get back there first. Just stay up there. Gordon is closing in, no question. But Rudd will do it. Ricky Rudd wins the Napa Auto Care 500 at Martinsville. And there was an incident coming off of corner number four for some cars. Ken Schrader is sideways. But in any case, Ricky Rudd has done it. For the first time since he won in the Brickyard 400 last year, he comes to victory lane. Well, Ricky Rudd, uh, folks, for you Ricky Rudd fans, he is awake and alert and smiling. He just said, hand me a tie hat. I, I, I can't get up, but I got to wear my tie hat. Congratulations, man. What an effort. Well, I'll tell you, these guys had a heck of a race car underneath them. And it was, I was in trouble from about lap five. My helmet wasn't working uh, really hot in a car and got blisters on my back, on my butt, everywhere you can think of. But like Bill Engel kept me going. I said, I sure am going to enjoy we can get this thing this win. I'll enjoy uh, Monday in the hospital room somewhere recovering. But we got a heck of a race car. It was a good deal to win this thing today. You almost got out of the car a couple of times. They had Hutch Strickland standing by. What kept you in the race car? Well, I think the only thing that kept me in the car, I knew I had a winning car. I knew it was a top two car. And, you know, it's been a long time since I had a car run like that. And it was, man, it was a tough thing. I knew I should have handed a car over to somebody. Uh, but on the other side, I was just felt so good to be up front again. Rudd led a total of 198 laps, which included the final 96 laps of the race en route to his only victory of 1998. Add in the fact that during the 1998 season, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and Dale Jarrett combined to win 23 of the 33 races on the schedule, and this win is an even bigger accomplishment when you look at the history books. Unfortunately, this historic win would be the final one for Rudd Performance Motorsports. His the streak of winning in the Cup Series snapped at 16 straight years. Once Ty decided they would leave his team after the 1999 season, Rudd chose to liquidate his equipment and close his team entirely. Rudd ended up driving for Robert Yates Racing in 2000 and would end up retiring in 2007. He would end his career with 23 Cup Series wins and, in my opinion, is without a doubt a future Hall of Famer, but also, he is without a doubt one tough customer and once again that'll do it for another video thank you guys so much for watching this is black flags matter catch you next time